Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. These may be familiar verses to a lot of people. Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is, You Can Have Joyful Heart Always. You can have joyful heart always. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your grace and mercy bestowed on our lives, Lord, yes, here on Lord. earth. We pray that you fill us with the Holy Spirit today yeah. yes, and Lord. convict us of, of any sins that we have, Lord, so yes. that we may get right with you, Lord. Uh, we thank you very much for dying on the cross and shedding your precious blood Amen. to wash Amen. away all of our sins, past, present, and future. Uh, for our eternal security to be in heaven, Lord. And while we're here on earth, we pray that you fill us with the Holy Ghost so that we may be a good witness and continue to share the gospel unto all the lost souls out here on earth, Lord. Yes, Lord. And allow us to do the will of the Father, Lord. Lord, I pray for all the brothers and sisters uh, in Bible Baptist Church International for their safety and well-being and allow them to come to a, a quick recovery from their illnesses that they are going through, Lord. Yes, Please Lord. be with them and comfort them and fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and don't leave them, Lord. Lord, Please be with Pastor Jay and fill him with the Holy Spirit yes, so that he may uh, preach a convicting sermon that will pierce our soul with the King James Version Bible, Amen. Lord, so that we may be a better Christian in this world, Lord, yes. because you live it inside of us, the Holy Ghost, Amen. so that the light may be shined unto this dark world. For the world is, is ruled by evilness, Lord, right. and we need more light in this world. And please use this, Lord. Use this vessel for your will, Lord. And we pray that you be with the church ministry today. Protect us, Lord. Keep us all free from spiritual evil attacks. Amen. Keep them away from here, Lord. And we pray that you bless this service. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Having a joyful heart is something that's lacking this day and age. Too many people live a life filled with trials, not only that, they're always despondent, disappointed, and discouraged. And that goes many, many ways because of how your heart is preparing for each day. We know that as a saved Christian, you wake up, you spend time with the Lord, and you ask to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's the right way to do it. However, as you go on with your day, a lot of times, you are cranky, you give attitude to people, and you don't display the character, Christian character, that you should. Just generic survey was out there, and you know, are most people happy? And according to survey, perhaps only 20% of Americans are truly happy. 20%. I mean, it was, you know, survey was done back in 1994. However, I wonder how it is nowadays. They think that happiness is imagination. Right. Joy only comes by imagining. You know, do you feel joyful when you do drugs? Because a lot of times, you know, people who do drugs are pretty happy. You know, they're out and thinking about different things. And a lot of times they say, you know, you're high, you're out of it. But those are temporary. Because it's hard to see and hard to find joyful people always, and especially joyful people that comes from the heart. When you treat your family members, is there joy in your heart? Because out here, when you are dealing with 
you know, strangers per se, or people that you don't see on a daily basis, you're always being careful, right? Yes. I mean, we have you know, Francisco and April here visiting. There's no way one of you guys are gonna go up there and start giving them attitude, right? You know, Francisco is a tall man, you know? You're not gonna go up to him and be like, man, why are you so much taller than me, you know? No, you're gonna try to, you know, have fellowship and show your joy, right? Holiday Inn, back in the day, wanted to fill 500 spots. And they interviewed 5,000 people. What happened was that hotel managers excluded people right away if they smile less than four times during the interview. You know how Holiday Inn always advertises that, you know, they're friendly, right? So they already had that in mind because people don't want to deal with unhappy people. Right. People don't want to deal with you know, people who's cranky all the time. They call them Debbie Downers, right? Wet blanket. But so many times, Christians behave in such a way that it discourages you know, unbelievers as well as believers out there. Right. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and my crown. So, Apostle Paul found joy in people that he led to the Lord. You know, when we look at crown in the Word of God, you cross-reference to 1 Thessalonians 2.19, it's crown of rejoicing. People that you lead to the Lord, they're your crown, right? So, some of you guys, you know, witnessing, leading people to the Lord, you're spiritual fathers, right? because you led him to the Lord. The greatest joy I think a parent could have is to see their child grow up to be a strong man and woman and see their children, their grandchild, becoming a stronger person, character-wise, you know, anything-wise, right? You know, that's why when you see grandchildren seeing, I mean, grandparents seeing their grandchildren, they're full of joy. And especially if their grandchild are doing well, especially in Christian homes, serving the Lord. You know, they're, they're, you, know you don't even have to ask them. They're always smiling when they look at him. Even if, you know, you know, they do something wrong, but they see that they have grown up to be a strong Christian man and woman. As you can see, one of the reasons why you do not have joyful heart it's because you don't have love for the lost souls out there. Because you don't do anything to lead anybody to the Lord. It is not only for our pastors and teachers, missionaries, and evangelists to go out there and preach the gospel. Gospel should be preached and needs to be preached by every single saved Christians Amen. out there. If you have trusted Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior, and you know that you're a child of God, then you have an accountability and you have duty to go out there and preach the word. Amen. Because think about it. You need to realize who you were before you got saved. And you need to realize who you are right now after you got saved. Yes, You're nothing but a sinner saved by grace. Yes. You and I, in order to have a joyful heart, have to constantly remember that, you know what? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner because of God's mercy, I'm here and not going to burn in hell. Amen. Not because I'm better than anyone. Right. Not because I'm taller, I'm handsomer, I'm more pretty, you know, I'm more rich, you know, I'm in better shape. No, because of God's grace only. Yes. Without that, without realizing that, how are you going to go out there and lead others to the Lord when you don't know and when you forget who you were in the past? When you start forgetting who you are and who you were in the past, there's no way you're going to be able to go forward and lead others to the Lord. Right. Think about it. If you see some jerk out there, and he's a jerk, but he needs the Lord just like you and just like me right. before we got saved. Jesus Christ did not die for nice people only. Jesus Christ did not die for proper people only. Jesus died for sinner of sinners. Jesus Christ died for every single human being out there. And he showed his love on the cross, Calvary's cross. Thank you. Then that jerk out there needs Jesus Christ too. Yes. 
Do you see that person as some jerk who you never want to deal with? Or do you see that person as a soul on their way to hell who needs the Lord Jesus Christ? Awesome. Think about it. If you have an attitude of looking down on people based on how they treat you or based on how they look, you really have to get right with the Lord. Because in the sight of every, in the sight of God, every human being, right? He does not look at their countenance or outside appearance. He looks at the heart. Right. Man, many times when we go out there and, you know, street preaching and do door knocking at witness, people, you never think that they'll accept Christ. They're the one who accept Christ. Like this heavily tattooed person comes out, you know, looking rough, right? And then suddenly when you start talking about the gospel, salvation, Jesus Christ, man, they cry like a little baby that accepts Christ. But when you see someone come out properly dressed, properly, you know, I mean, speaking, and then you think, right? And then suddenly they go, no, I don't need it. I'm self-righteous because I'm better than that biker living next to me. I'm better than that sinner living next to me. So, I'm okay. So you cannot judge people by their outward appearance, right? Amen. Then, if you really want to have joy in your heart, always, you have to think about lost souls out there and what you can do for the lost souls out there and think about the souls getting saved. I mean, aren't you happy when you hear a testimony of our brethren or you know, anywhere where you hear people get saved. Yes. I mean, they're saved from hell for Woo! eternity. I mean, there's joy in heaven when, when a soul gets saved from hell. Right. It's eternal. I mean, the time, we can't measure that time because that soul was going to burn in hell for our eternity, but they got saved. And when you look at your own self, I myself, you yourself, was supposed to burn in hell for our eternity. Yes. Think about it, for all eternity. We're not talking about 10,000 years, 50,000 years. We're not talking about million years. Think about it. I mean, you know how long it takes to count pennies to thousand? Probably takes forever. 10,000? Imagine you're trying to count pennies. That's worth million dollars, right? 100 million pennies? Yes. Billion dollars? You think about it, you're trying to count it. But think about the fact that you and I were supposed to burn in hell for all eternity. Every single second, every single minute, every single hour, every single day, every single month, every single year, for all eternity. But by the grace of God, through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. you and I got saved from Praise hell by trusting Him and Him alone. Shouldn't you have joy then? Yes. I mean, shouldn't you and I be full of joy, joyful heart, because... You know what? This world stinks, right? right? Sometimes my life has trials yes. and tribulations. Sometimes I can't get along with my family and friends and cousins or right. whatnot. But one thing for sure, because I have Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior, I won't have to burn in hell. Woo! Man, you turn around and you smile, yes. right? You look at them in the eyes and you're like smiling. Why? Because I don't have to burn in hell. You know what? Our conversation is going south. You know, you and I are arguing. You know what? Let's just stop for a moment. Right. You and I, you know, if you guys are safe, right, especially if you're a safe family, let's stop for a minute. You know, why are we arguing, right? What are we arguing about? Let's think about joyful things because Bible says in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, right? Amen. So it's a command. You and I have to rejoice, yes. okay? And especially if it's your husband and wife, you know, because you do have your arguments, right? You go, okay, honey, you know, let's stop, okay? Let's think about some joyful things. Let's think about the fact that you and I aren't going to burn in hell for eternity. Amen. Man, you start smiling, man, you know, we're such a fool for, yes. you know, arguing about little things. Good preaching. Because look at verse 2, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. Seems like there were some people who didn't have that joy. Why? I beseech Euodias and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. They were arguing. Something was going on between them. 
So Apostle Paul's like, man, patch things up. I mean, you could relate that to you and whoever it is, yes. right, in your life. Because if you don't have, you know, especially with a family member and say brothers and sisters in Christ, if you don't have that joyful relationship with each other, then you have to get it right. You have to patch things up because you won't have that, you know, true joy in your heart when you harbor bitterness, you know, when you have discouragement or when you have hatred or animosity towards somebody that's close to you. So if you see your heart and you feel like, man, how come I'm not always joyful? You know, I see this brother there, you know, I see this sister there, you know, I mean, they're always joyful. Why can't I leave, leave the Philippians 4.4, 4, you know, or Thessalonians 5.16, where it says rejoice evermore. Why can't I, or why can't you? Because, I mean, welcome to verse 1, you don't have love for the losses out there. You're not thankful for the fact that you're saved, and because you are not resolving any disputes that you're having with somebody in your life. Those things that you have to get taken care of, or else you're not going to be joyful. There's no way, because in the back of your mind, you're always going to have that thought. Man, how am I going to see that person? You know, how am I going to react when that person reacts this way? You're always trying to think about how you're going to deal with that person. Instead of always worrying about what's going to be happening in the future, you have to just resolve what's happening right now. If you see that person right now, you know, when the time is right, you know, resolve it. If that's your wife or husband, resolve it. If that's your children, resolve it. If that's your parents, resolve it. If that's your cousins, coworkers, you have to resolve it. Amen. Obviously, you, know, you first know that you can't do anything on your own. So you have to trust in the Lord. Look at Philippians 4, same chapter. Let's look at verse 13. Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You can be joyful. I can be joyful. We can have joyful heart, beside from being safe from hell for all eternity in our everyday life, because you and I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And what does that tell you and what does that tell me? You and I are weak. Yes. You have to admit that you're weak. Because if you think you're strong, you don't need the Lord. Why would you need somebody when you think that you're strong enough to do anything or everything? You have to recognize that without the Lord, you and I are nothing in the first place. And we need the Lord and Lord's strength to get through each day. Because what's stopping many Christians from being joyful? Let's turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I'm going to look at verse 16. James chapter 4, verse 16. So it's a great time in the beginning of this new year to check your heart and see whether you're joyful or not. See whether you're joyful always. James chapter 4, verse 16. The Bible says, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Do you know why you are not joyful? Do you know why sometimes your joy lasts for like a day or two, even hours, and disappears? Because of your pride. Right. Because you're boastful. You know, sometimes people, for example, right? You earn some Money, right? You say life is all about money, right? Love of money is root of all evil. So there was a promotion opportunity, and you got the promotion, right? And then it's all on you. You did everything, right? You did the projects, you know, you had the right relationship, and, and you're a safe Christian. And you start rejoicing, but it's a rejoicing in your boasting. Yes. So you're like, man. Honey, of course, you're really, really happy, but you're going to your family member. You know what? I did it. You know, I got this promotion. I, I, you know, I, you know, you know I, I made it happen. Man, I mean, of course, your family's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy, right? 
But those things last very little. Yes. You start your real job the next week. You're like, man, where was that joy? You know, I was so happy I got this job, but this job is very crappy. You know, <laughs> I'm making a little more money, but man, I don't like my boss. Man, my coworkers are horrible, right? Yeah. I wish I'd rather be at my previous job with a little less money, but peace of mind. Why does those things happen? Because you're rejoicing in your boasting. When you are rejoicing in your boasting, when you are proud and pride fills up your life and that's what gives you joy, it's not going to last long. And Lord has to chastise you Amen. as a loving father, chastises his you know, children. That's why many times Christians don't go far in their joyful heart because their joyful heart comes from not in the Lord, not in the lost souls getting saved, it comes from boasting. Right. All of your pride has gotten in the way of true joyful heart. In order for you to be truly joyful, in order for you to have a joyful heart, you have to realize always over and over and over, every single day when you wake up, when you have conversation with the Lord, Lord, I'm weak. I'm nothing. Yes. Unless you could say that to the Lord on a daily basis, you can't be joyful because that pride will get in the way. When that pride gets in the way, what happens? Your focus changes. You start looking down on people and you think you're better than somebody. You know, when proud people can't be joyful. Look at all those billionaires. They have all the money in the world, but they can't find peace. When they die, they die miserable people. Everyone knows Elvis Presley, right? You know, I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy about Elvis Presley. But six weeks before he died, a reporter asked Elvis Presley, Elvis, when you first started playing music, you said you wanted to be rich, famous, and happy. So Elvis was a rich guy. He accomplished a lot of things, right? So the reporter says, are you happy? Elvis replied, I'm lonely as blankety blank. Woo. Oh, that's right. So your fame, your money, adoration of people does not bring happiness. That's right. It's not bring joy in your life. Then what can you learn from Elvis? Do not put your trust, do not put your happiness in being rich in being famous, right? Yes. In getting adoration from people. Right. That will not bring you joy. That will only bring you pride and that will send you down, down to the gutter in yes. your spiritual state. That's why you and I have to be careful. Why am I living today? Is it to make more money? Is it to be more famous? Right? With all this social media going on, right? You know, a bunch of kids, young and old, everybody wants to be recognized. You know? I mean, right now, TikTok has passed Google as far as searching or something like that. So people, and what's TikTok about, right? It's all about showing yourself, get more views, more views, and more views. And as you go through that, what happens, right? You get so inundated, and your life is just about that, right? Oh, I only have 100 views today. Man, I got to get like 102 tomorrow, you know? Oh, I got 1,000 views today. Man, I got to get 1,001 tomorrow. And then your life is just about that. And when, when you see someone gives you, you know, more hearts or, I don't know, thumbs up or whatnot, I don't know how it works too much. And like, man, you're so happy. Oh, man. I have more followers today. How long does that last? Maybe for a little bit, very short. Right. And then you're like, you're worried already. You're anxious. Man, how am I going to get to the le next level? Nothing. I mean, is that going to really, really you know, glorify God? No. Think about it. You put your joy in wrong things, Christians. You yeah. put it in... Things like love of the world, right? Your flesh, the devil. I mean, you're always thinking about finding joy that will please your flesh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we go overboard, right? 
by eating, right? It gives us such a great joy when we're eating great food. And then you have your second and third servings. And what happens afterwards? Like, oh man, you know, I feel groggy, you know. You, know, you spend some time in the bathroom, right? And I'm like, man, I shouldn't have done it. And this, like, that's how like, a lot of your Christian walk is nowadays. For that short burst of time, you feel like you have little joy, right? Doing worldly things, doing flashly things. And then you come back to where you started. You know, very, very discouraged. And, you know, attitude is just not the best attitude. Why is it that as Christians, some of you have worse attitude than unsaved Christians out there? Well, I was riding bus to go to college in LA, you know, you know, way back in the years. You know, this man just came in, you know, it's a metro bus. He just started, you know, singing and saying to people, man, you know, I'm happy because uh, he's, I don't know the exact phrase because it's been over 20 years ago when he said it. Man, I'm so happy, man, because I'm, I got to see another day, you know. I'm so happy I get to live another day. And this was, I don't know if he was saved or not, right? right. But he, he, he was truly happy that, you know, he's alive another day. Maybe he had a, I don't know, tough, tough illness, tough background or something. But he was very joyful, genuinely, because he got to see another day. As Christians, you should be joyful you get to see another day because you could do something for the Lord today. Yes. And you could do something for the Lord tomorrow. I mean, all these lost people out there, you know, whatever they're working for is going to disappear. It's going to dissolve. But as a Christian, what you work for, especially you, if, you do, or if you're working and if you're living for the Lord, it could last forever. Amen. Just like what we saw in Philippians 4.1, you lead someone to the Lord, they become your joy and your crown Woo! and for all eternity. Think about that. Do you think, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ, you make billions of dollars? And because you love the soul, you let someone to the Lord, which will be more precious in the sight of the Lord? Your money or your soul? If each day is worth a dollar, you know, I don't know the term for countless money, right? Gazillion or... A gazillion or, you know, it's like when you lead someone to the Lord, that's, I guess they call it priceless. Amen. You strive each day to make extra dollar. I'm not saying you become a, you know, lazy bum and don't do anything and spend 24-7 trying to win this out there, right? right? No, you have to live a balanced Christian life. Amen. You have to do your best at everything that you do at work, at home, at church, everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, don't misunderstand that. But if your goal is to only strive to make one more dollar each day, you know, it's not going to compare to the eternity. And you won't have that joy. Then how, how, how can you really have victory over your discouragement? How can you have a victory of your crankiness and bad attitude on a daily basis? Number one thing is that you have to be thankful. You have to be thankful, you know. The, I think during the last week, you know, Pastor Jin Kim uploaded you know, about prayer. He had a very, very interesting and powerful point. What's the most important thing about prayer is giving thanks. Thanksgiving. Why? Because when you pray and give thanksgiving to the Lord, you give Him the credit. Yes. And when you give Him the credit, you're praising Him. When you're praising Him, you're giving all the glory to Him. What's the essential, what's the main point about praying in the first place? You want to give glory to God. Amen. You want to give all the glory to God. And how does it start? It starts from giving thanks. I mean, that's a, that is such a profound thing. And that is something that you and I have to have in our heart always in order to have a joyful heart. It's such a cliche term, be thankful, give thanks, and you take it for granted. 
I mean, how many times do you really, really think about giving thanks to the Lord for every little thing? Do you know, I'll give you a secret. I mean, fitty is a secret, right? You know, if you have, if you, have a, you know, spouses, right? Right? If you're a husband and wife, right? Even if you're dating right now, boyfriend and girlfriend. In order to squash any bad attitude, in order to squash that argument, just be thankful for the other person. Yes. Just think about how thankful you are that they're in your life, right? They may annoy you sometimes. There may be disagreements. There may be, you know, misunderstanding. But think about what Lord has done for you. Lord saved a sinner, his enemy, no good person from hell by giving his life for you, shedding his precious blood. And you are complaining and you're arguing with your loved one. A lot of times for petty things, right? Yes. Because of your boasting, right? You're rejoicing in your boasting. Right. You're like, oh, man, I know I'm wrong. Oh, man, you know, I think I'm wrong, right? <laughs> You're not even sure sometimes, right? But, you know, because it's me, right. you know, I right. can't give in, you know. It's hard for me to say, you know, I'm sorry, you know, or, you know, honey, you're right, or you know, I understand. Why? Because you're not thankful. Imagine before all those thoughts that go to your mind, you know, hey, how am I going to prove that person wrong? You know, how can I justify my situation? Think about it. Man, I'm thankful for that person. I'm truly thankful for my wife. I'm truly thankful for my husband. You know what? You two will have a much, much better joyful life. You are going to. Man, when, when you want to give an attitude to your other party, you're like, man, I'm so thankful for that person. How can I give attitude to that person? Right? Think about it. When you're thankful, that's why a lot of times, you and I are worse than an animal. We're worse than dogs, right? Man, we have a dog. Dogs are always joyful. I mean, they know exactly what's going to happen, right? You give them the same treat, but they're always happy, same way, sometimes more, yes. right? But you and I, and Lord constantly bless us the same or even more. We're so selfish and proud. Like, Lord, you know, that's not good enough, right? Just look at all the spoiled kids around us this day and age. But, you know, main problem is the parents. Do you think a child who is given everything when they're growing up compared to someone growing up in a communist country who has to fight for everything and someone gives him something, who do you think will be more thankful? Right? And think about it like this. You know, Asian culture and American culture is a little bit different. Asian culture is more fam family centric, and American culture is more individualistic. So when a kid is from Asian culture, a lot of times they're more less thankful. I'll tell you why. Because their parents make him that way. They're like, okay, son, daughter, have this, have that, have this, have that. But American culture is more individualistic. You know, you become independent a lot of times when you're 18. So when your parents even give them a little thing, they're like really thankful. Like, oh, thank you, Dad. Oh, thank you, Mom. You know, you know here's a you know, couple hundred dollars, you know. Here's a few dollars, you know, for a gas trip and stuff. They're like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. But Asian family, it's like, it's like automatic. <laughs> Only 100 bucks? Hey, man, I don't drive just, you know, just on. one way. I drive, I drive the whole week. Where's more money, right? <laughs> it's like it's as if, you know, it's given to you. It just tells you how unthankful people are. Yes. And as Christians, I guarantee, because I go through it all the time, when you and I are not thankful always, there's never going to be a truly joyful heart always because part of you always thinks that 
you need to deserve a little bit more here and there. But what's the characteristic of a thankful person? They're usually humble, and they won't say it. <laughs> I don't want you guys to be like, you know, I'm a thankful person. I'm a very thankful person, which means that I'm a humble person. You know? <laughs> I mean, that already tells you that, man, you're boasting already in yourself. Amen. You're rejoicing in your boasting. That's right. You know, you don't need to say it. You know, people see it. Your family notices it, right? Because when you're thankful, it leads to action. It doesn't just stay because whatever's in your heart eventually comes out, right? Yes. We see it in the Word of God. When you're truly thankful for the other person, when that person needs help, you go there and help. Them not even asking. Yes. Right? When you're truly thankful for that person, you pray for that person even before they ask you. Yes. When you're truly thankful for what the Lord has done for you, you're going to spend time with the Lord more and more. If you're not thankful, you won't spend time with the Lord. Then you ask yourself, right now? I mean, have you been spending a lot of time with the Lord recently? Have you been spending time with the Lord? You know, this is the ninth day of the new year. So first eight days, have you been spending time with the Lord more than 2021? If you haven't, what does that tell you? You're an unthankful person. Right. I mean, we like to be logical, right? Thankful, more time with the Lord, you're a thankful person. Unthankful, less time with the Lord, you're an unthankful person, which means you're ungrateful, which means I can guarantee that you're not joyful always. I can guarantee that you give attitude. I can guarantee that sometimes you're cranky. I can guarantee that you have some issues that you have resolved with some people. I can guarantee that you don't think about lost souls like you should. Right. It just all adds up. I mean, Bible is the most scientific book in the world. Yes. Whether scientists or, you know, anybody else like it or not, it's the most precise book. And God is precise. Okay. And God wants you and I to know, right, in order to defeat this world, we have to have joyful heart. And in order to have a joyful heart, you and I have to be thankful do you know why sometimes you feel like, man, where did today go? It's like I haven't really done anything for the Lord, right? I was busy with work, you know, spent some time with my family. But it's like, man, what have I accomplished today? You know why? Because you weren't thankful, which leads to the fact that you haven't spent time with the Lord, which means you didn't really think about lost souls out there. Then the day that you just lived was like, for not. It's like for vain. It's like nothing. Wouldn't you want each day to be fruitful? Wouldn't you want each day where you know that you, know, you give glory to God? In order to do that, once again, you have to be thankful always. Such a simple concept and it's such a simple thing to say. Like, I want to be thankful. I want to be more thankful. But it's something that you have to put it into action. You and I know it in our heart. You and I always hear it, but you and I don't put it into action. That's the problem. That's why wherever you are, you have to judge yourself. You have to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. Then you could actually maybe understand following verses. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Let's get verse 5. The Bible says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then you're going to be happy. You're going to have joyful heart. Why? Because you went to the Lord you let it out to the Lord, and you know the Lord's going to take care of everything. It's not you who's accomplishing anything. It's not you who's getting all the glory. It's the Lord who's doing everything, and it's the Lord 
who's going to get the glory? Amen. Of course, right? You do your part. Again, I have to emphasize over and over, we have to live a balanced Christian life, yes. right? You can't be just sleeping with the Bible and then think that everything's going to work out, right? You can't be thinking that I just pray and everything's going to be working out. Right. Yeah, you have to put your action into it. It's just that when you do your best and then you leave it everything up to the Lord, then what's going to happen? You know, you could truly have that peace of mind. You could have joy. Yes. Like, man, I mean, this day is worth the living. I'm doing my best for the Lord. I'm so thankful for everything. I'm thankful for my wife, my husband, my family, everybody. And I could maybe have a chance when the opportunity to come, you know, pass out a track and lead someone to the Lord, you know. And that's a blessing. I thank my Lord so much that I'm alive today to do it. Just like that man from the bus, right? I don't know if he's saved or not. He left that impression on me. I mean, 20 years ago. Think about that. I mean, how, what kind of impression are you leaving on others? Your family, your coworkers, your boss, right? Your husband and wife. When they think about you, do they think, about, do they think of a joyful person? Someone who's truly joyful in the Lord, someone who rejoices all the time and evermore? Or do they think about someone who's usually cranky, not joyful, unhappy, discouraged, you know, just living the life with no direction? Is that how people think about you? Where people always have to be careful of what they in front of you because they never know if you're going to explode you know, get angry or because, you know, you're just a generally a unhappy, unjoyful person. I mean, thank God, a person like you and me, God gave grace so that we could get saved from hell. So we don't have to burn in hell because we trust the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's another thing. Until we get to heaven, you and I have to live a joyful life. Right. You and I have to be rejoice always. We can't be like, you know, UODS and Syntyche, right? You know, if you have that issue in your life with your loved ones or anybody, you have to resolve it in order to have true joy. And be thankful. Think about it. Be thankful for who's in your life. Don't complain about and murmur about what you don't have, right? America has gotten to a point you always think about what you don't have. You turn on TV, you turn on your phone, it's all advertisement. You know, better house, better cars, better jobs, better fame, better following, all of that. Forget it. Think about where you are right now and be thankful for what you have, right? Then you could probably understand, or you will understand what Apostle Paul is saying. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. You will have a content life. Right? I mean, what's better than that? Where I am right now, I'm content. It shows you that you're, you're in peace, you're peaceful, and you're thankful and you have joy and harmony with your family. You could testify like that. However, if in whatever state you are, there with you're not content, then it's opposite. You live a miserable Christian life. If Lord tarries, you're gonna die as a miserable Christian. You don't want that, especially knowing that you're safe from hell. You have an eternal home in heaven, right, where you, you have this opportunity to serve the Lord and lead others to Christ, be a good example and encouragement to other brothers and sisters in Christ. Why would you give up this opportunity with your unhappy heart, with your sinful heart, with your boastings? It's time for you to get right with the Lord 
and truly be thankful for who you are, where you are, for who he is, and rejoice. Because the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let's pray.